Good morning, folks. The Easter Bunny broke my laptop overnight, and so setting up the backup to do this morning news program took a little while. Sorry for the delay. Well, let's not waste any time this morning as we come over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were utterly calm. There are no sunspots whatsoever, and solar flaring remains dismally low. But it is on a slight rise back towards B-class range, and that is due to readings bleeding over the incoming northern limb from what must be a sizable sunspot. Dark solar tornadoes the size of Earth are leading that grouping as well. We'll have eyes on that one tonight. Meanwhile, here at Earth, the solar wind has intensified this morning, where on the right side you see purple and green jumping up together. It isn't into any scary telemetry ranges, so geomagnetism is calm right now, but it was light in Europe when the impact occurred, and both Karuna and Lixel rheometers detected extra plasma penetration into the ionosphere. They spiked the same time the solar wind hit. We are expecting solar wind to be intense for days. Even with the equatorial portion of the coronal hole just facing Earth today, spring is Earth's southern heliographic position in orbit around the sun, and therefore the southern portion of the coronal hole does have a good chance of hitting us squarely. We might remember that yesterday we reported a magnitude 6.2 earthquake in Chile that struck a red alert zone during the earthquake watch set up by that coronal hole. Well, a few hours later, the USGS finally gave it a red mark significance designation, meaning it will count for the forecasting model. And currently, using 16.5% of Earth's fault lines, the model is running at 76.5% success rate in capturing these big events. But remember, this is about you, and this science will never really see the light of day if you don't start predicting earthquakes too. Join the team over at QuakeWatch.net. The forecasting forums are getting interesting now. Real quick here, as you might imagine, the holidays are slow for news, but a number of Chinese and Albanian scientists have released three new papers on pre-seismic signals. One on total electron content, one on VLF signals, and one on surface thermal anomalies. Folks, while these factors are slightly different than the ones we use, they're all driven by the global electric circuit and space weather, and so we're all looking at the same thing. Got to do the weather today because watches exist all over. Central convergence set to be a major pain in the U.S. today with tornadoes possible and severe hail likely. There is a low creeping into the eastern portions of Europe that draws its convergence line down over the Mediterranean waters, which is usually what it takes to make those storms much more intense, so eyes open in the eastern block. North Island of New Zealand still seeing some rainfall, but my eyes are on the earth spot forming along the Kermadec Trench that I very much want to see get out to sea quickly. We've got that cyclone heading at Myanmar in the Bay of Bengal. It will be making landfall in the next few hours. Prayers go there. And last but not least, that system exiting South Africa is about to get a boost from the Indian Ocean as its convergence pounds Madagascar. Website members, you've got a new Fly on the Wall podcast yesterday, and David from Adapt 2030 was back. You'll be getting a new Deeper Look episode in a few hours as well. It is 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.